Wow. I don't think I don't think my parents would have ever been able to do like that. My parents have like never like this way. Yeah. My dad majored in computer science here. Ah. So he could turn out to the wrong way. He's computer science, but made him go into neurology. He did artificial intelligence. He was like, oh, I like real intelligence. What happened to him? Did you make this video, Jamie? No, I did not. This is oh. made by. We watched a little bit of this. It's about to show life. Oh, it's oh, so true. It's so cute, right? Look at that thing. Ew. What is that? Oh my god. Well, why is it gross? That is adorable. It is adorable. Mm. Is that its mouth? It's a little bit. It's also true. Oh, look at this. This is an assassin bug. This thing goes around, it sneaks up, and it kills insects. And then um, when it kills them, it, uh, so it's actually the thing underneath there. It sucks them dry, then it glues them onto its top, and it just makes this like outer camouflage of dead corpses. Um, it's a pretty badass bug. Is, that like a, is it like a spider? That's what it looks like. It's, it's, it's a bug. It's like a true bug. Um, so it looks kind of like, have you ever seen like those stink bugs? Yeah. That are around? It kind of looks like one of those. Oh, a prairie dog. Those are mongooses. Never mind. That's very mongooses. <laughs> mongooses. They're pretty adorable. So this is an daughters. So I'm going to... So this is um, no. This is a great movie from the seventies called Mysterious Castles of Clay, and it's made by these really amazing documentary filmmakers called Joan and Alan Root. I think Joan Root actually got murdered by poachers, um, but they made really awesome documentaries. But this documentary doesn't really exist anywhere. Um, oh, yeah. I, had to, I had to track this down to the only people who still had a copy. And they wanted me to pay all kinds of money to get like a, uh, to purchase the film. So then I would just ask for like a screener, but they were all mean about that. Then I got our library to request a screener, but it came with all these like caveats, like I'm not allowed to show it for class and like, really? stuff like that. Um, but why? Is it so I don't know. It's, it's it didn't really seem like it's like classified information. It's like animals. No, it's just so random. I mean, it's almost be a public like domain. Um, well, it's and it's totally fair use. This is educational purposes. So in terms of copyright and stuff, this is it's fair game. They're just trying to be bullies about it. So if someone asks, it's never happened. If somebody asks, it's never happened. Okay. Um, <laughs> but um. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really great documentary. I'll send you guys a secret link to it. Uh, uh, but don't post this link anywhere. <laughs> the trail. What happened? No, what if we just post on our Facebook? <laughs> I don't know. Channels are nothing would happen. Facebook took away my video privileges because they broke copyright law, so they probably recognize it as like real wow. illegal. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so people just came in. This is a part. This is that documentary we saw about termite. I'll send you a cool secret link. Um, but uh, it's all about termites and how they live, but it goes into all of the other creatures and stuff that live around and within these termite mouths. Like, there's these big monitor lizards that chill out because they hang out, out on the top of the mounds um, because uh, at night all this hot air comes out and like moves them up and stuff. Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, this is actually illustrating how they use convection currents to provide their own air conditioning within their giant tunnels. So if you see, you know, those, you've seen those giant termites now. Yeah, yeah. Um, the termites actually just live down here, but they have really tall chimneys. And the way it works is these tall chimneys, sun hits them, they heat up all day, they make the hot air rise. But this makes, um, they, the, they have to pull air from below. Yeah. This actually pulls cooler air from underneath to keep circulating. So just by the shape 
of how those chimneys are. Uh, that thing remind you. Who's when do you do you hate it? I can't tell if that's your So the mongoose is cute, but this adorable elephant shrew coming up is not cute. Um, you're very silly. Anyway. Um, so yeah, but just by the shape of it, they, they provide their own passive air conditioning system, which is pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So um, it's totally fair use. Um, Educational purposes. I'm teaching a class. I'm showing you clips of this video, um, but yeah, don't send the link. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're not on this is that when monitor did, lizard. When did it come out? So it's Tom. Seventy-eight. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Was it ten? Thirty years? Oh, I don't Where? know. Disney keeps okay. Disney keeps uh, upping the limit for when things go into public domain. So it's basically every time Mickey Mouse is about to become a public domain artifact, Disney goes and pressures a bunch of Congress people and is like, hey, you know the way our copyright law works? We should add like 20 years to that. And they're like, well, I don't know. And then suddenly those people get a little richer somehow. And then, then suddenly uh, the, the copyright law changes. But anyway, enough about copyright law and cute things. Um, I don't know what they are. Like baby they're really, because dingoes I'm going to take I think dingoes, okay, okay, class, what is, what is your status on this thing? <laughs> I think it's cute, I think it's adorable, I think it's, you know, it's too long. This is like the epitome of cute right there. It's so bad. He has the nose of an aardvark, but like the body of a blowfish. It's just like... Okay, clap, today, <laughs> lab, lab, crunch, crunch, you only have two and a half days left of class to finish oh, your boy. thing up and make things that are going to blow people's freaking minds. <laughs> My God. The people are going to be communing with animals in ways they've never experienced before. So what you have to do today, come up with something that you're going to do, then start doing it, and ask me hella questions. Whoa. Larry, yeah. you already told me what you're going to do. Yeah. Calibrate that thing up. Let's yeah. get it going. Um, also, Larry, yeah. it's been yeah. months now. Oh, okay. yeah. I still see a bare pressure sensor. Oh, yeah. You guys got to put this in something. Yeah. something. Yeah. I will not let this project pass yeah. if there's still just a bare pressure sensor. Ah. At the end. Got it? Uh -huh. Okay, cool. You guys, what is your plan for the day? Um, we're working on how to do some of those wires. I'm working on uh, separating the box off. Okay. What is the box? It's hiding all the wires. We just don't want the wires to do it. And then I'm working on looking at how to work on I would recommend for um, when you guys are doing demos, if you want to show people maybe some of your like, documentation stuff, I would print out some pages. I mean, you can just take your presentation and just print out you know, some things, but if you want like, if you just have like three pictures that you print out from your presentation, that might you know, help you rather than like always having to like flip through a PowerPoint with them yeah. on like, a laptop there. That might be a lot easier. Are you requiring that or recommending that? I'm recommending it. Okay. Because I can, I can print things. Well, I can too. I'm, I'm just thinking. Mm -hmm. I think it'll make it a lot easier for you guys to present uh, to people who come by. They might come up and ask questions. Or to exactly. Sorry, man. Yeah. And part of, part of the other thing too is sometimes you have more than one person talking with you. And maybe this person, you're already halfway through like chatting with them about what you're doing. But if you have other like pictures here, another person can walk up, 
and kind of like see your thing and like see your your other slides, you know, asynchronously. Yeah. Cool. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna come back and check on you guys in a little bit. I'm gonna see how your mouse is doing. Okay. Okay, dude. Whoa. Using some printing. Dude, this is people are gonna love this guy. I accidentally like posted it. I didn't really post it. I don't have a Facebook. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh really? Again. You can you can other that one. But people are I didn't like any questions that you left like a channel. Yeah, you were out of that. Yeah. And it just has these images of myself. That's all it says. <laughs> you might want to just like edit right now. Um, yeah, I'm just okay. Okay, and that's what like your Yeah, I'm just okay. And then our alphabet version Yeah. That's why it's very much technical transport. And so once you have your final thing too, um, we have a group. Basically, a Georgia Tech group on Instructables. And um, I'll send you the link to that, and you can share it with our people who are going to that. Cool. Cool. He thought about using. Nice. Uh, so the steps we have right now are supplies, the tools, and the But those end up being on the I love that joke. But How do you get your GIF to actually animate? Okay, we thought about using vibration motors and photo uh, resistors to make the mouse sensitive to like, dark light and dark light. Like, oh, then we found these in my stuff. Like, 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 like it still shows me just the name. And I even like upload it to like stream files. Perfect. Perfect. And the code I just pulled up the same thing. I'll just change it to the kit. Okay. Yeah. Well is it? I mean that's just like your Arduino code? Yeah. Oh, okay. Usually it's just like white, you know. It's up to you. It's it's whatever, however, however it's easiest for you to explain something. Uh, but obviously, at this point of an instructable, so that someone can create this thing again. Exactly. Yep. Um, and so, like, how you want to split it up into steps is fine. Um, generally, you don't want to have just like 
two big steps. Yeah. Or you're just like have a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, you also probably don't want like 150 little steps where you're like, and then cut this part, yeah. and then cut this, you know, or something like that. Okay. So usually I would say things fall between six and 12 steps max. And make sure to, um, in your instructable, to not only just tell them how to do whatever you did, but then at the very end, or maybe even at the beginning, show your thing working. Um, so, you know, show it off. Uh, so it doesn't just have to be like, put it all together. You can get ready, put it all together, and now check it out and play with it, you know, so you can have your documentation. Should we have like, do this part and then show them like the, the thing rotating? Sure. And then do this part and show them the mouse that you know, totally. and all of it. Yeah, it's a great idea. I figured that would be like, do this step. If it doesn't quite fit, then fix you. Uh -huh. and this step so that way they're like, step by step checkup. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. uh, How's it going? Cool. Okay. Cool. I need to ask you about how to solder right angle headers. Uh, is do I just keep this flush, or do I like make this top part flush? Um. Let's see. What's it going to look into? This is how I use my FPID right now for connectivity. Okay. So this is going to go. So you probably don't want it. Uh, you don't want it flush because it won't fit. But if you pop this guy on, it will provide you the appropriate spacing. Okay. Then, um, have you soldered like header pins and these things yet before? Uh, with my other thingy that I have. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see. In general, what you want to do. And you want to add yeah. 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 Okay. Um, then I would so Mr. Hand holding it and then you're gonna you're gonna Yeah. Or just probably the obstacle. Just for that. I just don't want to use the So then you're just gonna take you said the obstacles and you're trying to this thing. Cool. 
So anything you want. <laughs> That's what I said. So they actually changed it because they got enough people complaining about the degree. Um, so basically, we just took like all the engineering classes, um, which I thought was great. And but other people were like, oh, I go to an interview, I don't know what to tell people. Uh, I'm like, you just tell them whatever you want. It's great. Um, just tell them what you're interested in. But everyone got angry. So anyway, then they changed it to industrial enterprise and systems engineer. Uh, which I'm like, now there's something, I don't know what, you know, how to describe that. What does that even mean? So, but we did do, I took a lot more so in class. Okay, later on. How's it going? Organized, but the way it's 
organized, even if we have these pins that make things simpler, some of them cross over into other pins and that makes things extra complicated. And by the end of it, everything still has to come together and get its point. So I can't take out all the individual parts and still be separate. Yeah, yeah. Another thing I need to do, I need to run by the Did you get this from Adafruit? Uh, that one was three, from Adafruit, yeah. Three, like, okay. like, like a three ply thread from there. And it still works in my sewing machine, but it's a little chunky. Yeah, so I got the medium one like that. Oh, whoops, yeah. sorry. No, I completely forgot. I hadn't sewed it on yet. Cool. Um, it's actually almost like too heavy for my needle, which is kind of cool, but kind of like weird. But like, yeah, since it's so thick, like, you mean for your hand needle? Yeah. But. Oh, um, it's definitely too thick for well, certain fabrics, like fleece. Uh, uh, so. Felt, I, I think, is going to be okay. I haven't tried that mm -hmm. yet, but. Okay. I told you you can laser cut felt too, really easily, right? Oh, I think you did, but I just didn't think about it yet. In case you need to, like, you know, quickly make, you know, your patterns or whatever in some sort of intricate design that will, what parts you need to cut. Cool. This feels good. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's really reliable too. It's kind of embarrassing. Good. <laughs> I tried using, oh, that was a long day. I tried using this as a breath sensor, but it didn't work well for that. <laughs> the fabric's too um, stiff. Wait, what do you mean? Like, then, still with the like, hair? Like, I was going to have, like, a thing oh, under my nose like this. Yeah. And when I breathed no. out, it would, like, you know, blow it and close the circuit or whatever. But yeah. It, uh, it it's work. too stiff for your breath. Like too that. stiff and too thin. The air doesn't really oh. catch it that well. Right. But still, you could do, like, a electronic beard. Are you doing, you're thinking about something like that oh. for, for No Shave November? Oh, that'd be pretty cool. For people who can't grow okay. beards, yeah. they can live vicariously and, like, <laughs> have a cheap pet beard. You can post gross-looking Facebook statuses, too. So, this, which is going to be what? Uh, Vibe Motor has a scarf. I guess I could draw out, like, a little scarf there. Something like that. But, um, yeah, so this is human size, and then this is... Yeah, cool. Yeah, both still have a stroke sensor. Okay. Um, I have, obviously I have like 700 different LEDs and things like that and mm -hmm. like four different vibe motors, but for the sake of getting this done, or I mean, mm -hmm. getting it to show that it works. And so this will be mounted on mm -hmm. your little tower, right? Something like that. Cool. Yeah. And you'll have LEDs going up it, or? I haven't figured out like what configuration, but I feel like. I think I'd push again for the also the, the, oh, for the, servo. the servo. I think that could be very attractive to a cat. Because um, 
I'm not 100% sure how the lights are going to be, but you can have those end with a thing moving around. I think it could be really engaging piece. It would be cool. 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 Man, I should have I really should have talked to you about that, like, about the servo idea before I shot it down. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's not going to be that hard, right? Well, no, no. But uh, I was thinking about, like, instead of some things to do, like, that weird, like, in the little pocket cat, there'd be like two flare resistors, and you'd cover up one of them. Oh, and you'd yeah, have yeah, that, yeah. like the feeling of making it go left and right. Uh -huh. But I don't know. I don't know what other interactions are playful along that line. And I did like overnight shipping on this half thing, and I'm like, I don't have the oh, wallet for this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but. Another thing, too, when you guys are documenting your works, um, put in, uh, you know, like, future ideas, too. Um, and people will give you good feedback about, like, oh, hey, you know, she was talking about... Like, how we can improve. Exactly, yeah. Or, like, you know, what the, if you were going to make, like, the next version of this, what would you have done? How would you have improved this part? Because, um, like, with just that little... Um, outdoor tree stand there's like guys like who sent me like pictures of like little drawings that they did for like how you can make it collapsible and things like that um so they're pretty they're very helpful cool. so what is your so let me out your next your next plans the next plan so there are two things just um is mostly the xd stuff and then separately both at the same time Making sure that your simple that the simple boards can take an input from XB or from just like the sensor for right now. The simple what? The simple board. Oh, okay. That's what those are. Okay. Lily pad simples or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then can it output? So, both those two things, and also messaging people like, do you have a mini USB cord and are you in style? Oh, do you not? You still don't have one of these? Yeah. Um, I can, I can look in my Please. backpack. Okay, I'm gonna go make a uh, run across there to OIT, see if we can borrow a USB cable. Does anybody else need any other cords? Nope. Anything else? I can run to my apartment and just get my own cable. Well, how about you run over to OIT and ask cool. if they have a USB cable? 
It is on this floor. On this floor. I don't know if it's all right.
take, take a picture of the man uh, healthy worm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Take a picture of the man healthy worm. Take a picture of the melty worms. Healthy or melty? How are your worms doing? So your worms, your, your worms turn into mush or something? <laughs> Old batch of worms. The new worms are like healthy, strong fighters. They're great. <laughs> okay, I don't know, man. Oh, no, what's that? That's the average amount. Okay, too sensitive. Too sensitive. Too sensitive. So, what are you doing? Average? <laughs> what you do? Oh, well, it is averaging, but the average is so close to wow, the average, I guess, that when it changes by like one point, it starts activating. And since like my 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 light average is four hundred three, <laughs> and my Light reading is 401, and it just stays yeah, at 401. Yeah. It's just that. Can you make it bigger? But that's why you're. So, okay. Show me where you um, calibrate. <laughs> Show me where you collect the average. Well, I'm checking. It's right here. So, in the middle of my. Uh, Aaron's so loop, weird. I have a Boolean just to check whether it has been calibrated or not. I think um, that is good. It takes about. I have it set to 10 oh, right now. Good. So, it only takes. Your problem is you're not, no, um, what you're doing is, you're doing, you are, your loop's running, yeah. and then you're averaging, and your loop's running, and you're averaging, and your loop's running, and you're averaging. What you want to do, here's what you're doing there, okay? Um, I'm going to bring the whole thing. Yeah. Start calibrating the target over it, actually starts running down. Oh, so this is beyond, this isn't in the main program? Um, it is in the main program, but I have a Boolean to check whether or not it's been calibrated. And if it hasn't been calibrated, then it doesn't do any of the, the main, uh, what's it called? Examination? Observation. So here's, here's how you want to handle this. All right. So you have set up, uh -huh. and then you got your loop. Uh-huh. In setup, what you're going to do is you're going to make a little for loop. Okay. And over the course of, let's say, like uh, 10 seconds, um, I'm going to write the pseudo code here. Um, for 10 seconds, get a um, uh, analog read. Um, plus uh, total, so you're gonna add up, uh, right when it starts up, you're just gonna, for 10 seconds, you're just gonna sample, 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 make a really big thing like that. Yeah. You can put your little progress on there. Yeah. Um, then do uh, average equals total over progress. Uh, From there, this average variable, if you wanted to be somewhat stupid about it, but lazy, uh, <laughs> stupid but lazy, um, you could use, you could just straight up use this average uh -huh. and just have like a, if um, average is um, less than the, uh, you know, let's say a threshold, well, that's, the thing is, that's the way I, I have been doing it. What is the other way you're thinking of? 
I like I it doesn't. It looks to me like you are you're re-averaging the whole thing in your loop. Oh no 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 no. Oh okay. So this loop this loop what what happened was the last time I tried to use for loops like with the counting robot you can't do a for loop and take in like real like touch input or anything like that so I thought it wouldn't I wouldn't be able to take in real time light readings while inside of a for loop but I actually I should be able to. But you don't need a for loop down here. No, not not down there. See, I would I would be using a for loop up here, and I would want to say take in th these many inputs for that many, that long. I think I actually can do that, which is when you were showing me, I was like, oh, I probably should be able to do that since it's a light reading and not like. Uh, my main worry was that I wouldn't be able to pull information that's different from the light reading as I went through the for loop. Um, no, for the sensor or for your pressure sensor or for your light. What you're going to do is you're going to set them to where nothing's touching them or anything like that. Everything's how it's going to be. As soon as it turns on, it's going to run the setup, and it's going to calculate the light average, and it's going to calculate the pressure average. Yeah. Um, and that'll be for when nothing's touching it. Yeah. Then, in your loop, you don't need any other more loops with that. You can just do, like, if the thing's significantly different than your average, bingo, do something. Yeah, no, the part problem I'm having is right here, because I've, I've got this down, like, I've been checking the average as it goes along, and it's not changing. Once what um once the average has been set, the average has been set. It's just that the average is too like the average and what's actually happening are too close to each other that when something minuscule happens, like a leaf flies in front of my light thing, it's like, oh, it changed by point two. I need to activate all this. But so then you should just do um if if reading reading is um if reading minus average, and then just absolute value, is greater than a threshold, yeah. then trigger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and so then, if, if your thing keeps turning on because it keeps, when you, when it's just sitting there, it's, it wavers between like one or two yeah. or below, you just make that threshold bigger. Yeah, that's exactly what I need. Cool. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Oh, I like it. And what was that? 
So class, real quick, what I'm thinking is for, um, is it Thursday, December 5th? Yes. That's our big demo day. Thursday. So, what's up? Thursday. I don't remember. All right. I think it's um, 4.30 to 6, I think we have the place. Um, I think actually it's 6.30, so there's plenty of time to shut that. I was thinking about, so there'll be people coming by. Um, if you guys are super good, I may even buy us pizza. Um, we can get pizza. Um, and, um, but I was thinking maybe, because you'll each have your things, you'll have them set up, people will be coming by and you'll chat with them. But I was thinking maybe we could also have a thing where maybe about half an hour in, we just go from, as like more of like a group, to like each person and you can do like a bigger like, hey, here's my thing and so then you can do like your like full like five minute like ten minutes just talk about like all the more like intricate parts um so you can give people like who are around maybe more deep knowledge of of what you're up to and that kind of stuff then like when people are come by and they're like hey how does this part work and you're like oh it goes like this and like, oh cool and you know they walk off um does that sound good sounds perfect yeah do we need to like supply tables or anything like that or do they have some for us? um I'll try to figure out tables for okay. you. Um, what kind of materials do you guys need to set up? Um, an outlet. An outlet. There's outlets around there. I would need yeah. an outlet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Maybe something to plug this into. Or I just get rid of my battery. You have a battery. Okay. But just these things, yeah. maybe like what you mentioned before, your light up. Yeah. yeah. So um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to raid some of these extension cords and outlets here. Yeah. Um, we may even, we might just, we might roll some of these little tables uh, out there. So I may have, there's like a coffee table out there. I think that might work good for the board game. Um, but then maybe for some other people's things, just to have something to sit on or to set stuff on. I can roll down some of these little black uh, roll leaf bobs. And we'll be right, ever, has everybody seen the space? I don't no, think I don't know that we can. It's going to be, it says like Tenenbaum Atrium. You know where, okay, so I just walked into Clough and Starbucks is over here, right? Yeah. Starbucks over there. And then I see some information person here. I'm like, information person, I need your help. And so now they're talking to me. I'm standing in front of them. Starbucks is over there, right? Behind me is like, a couch and I know, I know where you. I know where you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you just keep walking down the main staircase and watch if you hit a glass wall. Exactly. And if you go through the glass wall, we also have that little outside area yeah. where you can try to hook stuff up to trees or whatever. Yeah. You need to definitely look at those trees and figure out how you're going to attach your things to the trees. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Probably cool. yeah. not today. Okay. Uh, because it's all gross. Yeah. 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 Be prepared for grossness, though, people. What you can also do is, um, yeah, really you can make these even smaller, and you can, like zoom in. So you have like the curve right off.
in the video. Move the trigger. Threshold. 
I think it's taking and reading too quickly and the threshold is too low. Okay. So it, I do this and it holds itself, like it takes, it's delayed. It just builds up. Cool. Like a, maybe a video of us playing. Yeah. That'll get set off by anything. Yeah, I think it's good. It's fun. So make sure it's not like being set off by leaves. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know if that can be avoided. Things are gonna just fall in front of it. You can have like a really small resource of things. At least this will catch a squirrel or a bird, which is really cool. Yeah. Connect a bunch of these things together, then press a button, and it goes like, "Okay, routing everything so it looks visually makes sense." Yeah. Wiring does not do that. that I don't know if you want to see a program like this. It looks at Arduino code and runs the entire thing as if it were an Arduino. Yeah. Whoa. See, there used to be um, when I took electronics in high school, we used some sort of program. I forget what it was. Looked a lot like this, mm -hmm. but then you could have little microcontrollers. They didn't have Arduinos, but you know, you could tell whatever logic circuits or whatever, and then you press like run and it starts, you know, running and the lights would blink and yeah, everything like that. Mm -hmm. and then, you can't process Arduino code. Yeah, exactly. One thing you can, the, the nice thing about this is that you can then turn it into like, you can switch to PCB mode. Yeah. And then you can uh, create your own PCB. And this thing will actually like intelligently route the weeds and stuff like that. Larry, I would keep that in case something goes wrong. Yes. So you want to keep extra scrap. Yeah. Every time you have to hardware that you have to like scrap it But it, it's really helpful when people are uh, trying to redo your thing to actually use a wiring diagram like that. Do you know how you're using that? Yeah. It's great. You guys are all giving back so much to the, the world that you've learned from. I'm proud of you guys. Do you like my hot dog shot? Yeah. It's really Are they chili dogs? Or just on a rainy day. I think just regular hot dogs. This one says Chicago style. Are you able to get this thing yeah. chatting? program that guy. So from there you'll be able to make this LED go on, right? That's just the hope. My my laptop is actually slow enough to like prevent me from seeing Remember for all you guys making Instructables too, after you publish it, there's the whole thing of like, oh, do you want to join this contest or whatever? Yes. Select as many of the contests as you can. Someone will be like, um, for this um, bread baking competition, we don't know if your worm board game fits the requirements. And so 
So the email you can be like, sorry, you've been rejected. But I would just try to apply to as many, especially if they're even somewhat pertinent, I would apply to as many as you can. Because you might get like a free t-shirt no matter what. They send a lot of stickers. <laughs> but then every now and then you get a laser cutter. So. Oh, for where? Um, oh, did I not tell you guys about that? No. Do you know my laptop I have? Yes. Do you see my camera that I have? Yeah. Have you ever heard of my laser cutter that I have? Yep. Those all know. just came from what? that paintball constructible. I won you that got a laptop? I got a laser cutter too. You have your own laser cutter, Brian? Bring it in. Um, it's really big and you need ventilation. Um, <laughs> I can carry on my bike. Huh? You kind of wanted like the... It's a 12 by 20. Big enough. Yeah. We, we did laser cutting on cookies at a party I had. Two weekends ago. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> terrible. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, so, I mean, that was kind of out of the blue. Uh, I won a whole freaking laser cutter. So, I was just about to ask you a consumer laser cutter product. That's like a thing. So, you have to make your own ventilation for somehow? Uh, well, I mean, I, had, I, I went to Home Depot and I got some dryer vent tubes and I run those out the door. Okay. Uh, I'm wondering if I should restart my laptop since this is not. Isn't it, isn't it the, the scribbler thing? Is it, or no, no, it's the USB serial. Yeah. That seems right, right? Yeah. Well, okay, it's Okay, so now I go to tools. Did you check which board you're using? Oh, yeah, it's totally not the right board. Yeah. Whoops. Um, Do all of you guys realize that you don't have to compile before you upload? Oh, yeah. In Arduino? You can just press the upload button and it'll automatically compile. But it feels more satisfying. You just did it. Ah! Yeah. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> oh, this is totally not what it should be. Um, no. I don't understand what your, what your sketch would be doing. No, it totally is taking some... Oh, okay. It's reading when gotcha. I'm stroking. It's like going to be off the There you go. Um, cool. Is it just... This is great. How do I do it? All right. Oh, maybe on the bottom. I bet there was like. Yeah, I have a lot of these, but can't tell. But. You can see it rolling. Okay. So, well, see, we have our loose dirt, but we're. we're Yeah, Hold it right there. It seems pretty good. Going. Going. Is there any kind of weird delays or anything? No, no I don't have. Unless it just so happens that I don't think a, a current would stay in there for that long. So, I don't know. No. That thing. That's well, not doing anything. Way to go. <laughs> I untangled like this cord from those. Alright, let's move. Which ones do we know are conductive? So like this one right here? Yeah. We want it to touch. All the way back over to like that. Hmm. Weren't. Is your Arduino even on anymore? Maybe it's not. I should probably give it a power source from the, like a bat. Well, it's it's connected. No, it's so. connected. It should be fine. Do I have to actually like flick that on? 
Oh, I have no idea. I've never used a lily pad before. My guess is that that switch just controls the power supply thing that they have oh, there. Okay. Huh. Weird. Why is it not? Hold on. Well, I guess we kind of removed a bunch of these hairs, so we'll go to. Ah, uh, we yanked out some hairs from the bottom or something? Yeah, these guys are. Well, so, I mean, like, okay, so this should just. If I lay that across there, it should work, right? Unknot it for us real quick. What do, what do you mean? I mean, like, uh, oh. get rid of your... Gotcha, I was like, not... Interrobang. Right? <laughs> so, well, exclamation no, point's called, what's an interrobang? That's the combination of the question mark oh, and the yeah, exclamation yeah, point. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You so, the board's being weird right now. Right. Oh. Nope, that one's right. Yeah. Maybe we just did that. Weird. Try it again, Maybe upload. Maybe we just... Um, yeah, I feel like maybe it's, um, yeah. do you have your external power supply? Yes. Let's plug that in and see if there's something we need to happen. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So now things be working okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think there was something that went weird with your uh, uh -oh. external power supply. Okay. Let's see if we can. All right, so that switch works like that. Makes sense. I mean, there's probably just a bunch of things touching right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, this guy. There we go. And. It's something on the bottom, I think. So, another thing you can do too is what you do is. You don't do, if it's connected or if it's not connected, what you do is you do, is it different than the previous, like, reading? Oh. You okay. know, so it's just like, you have, like, an old state, new state. Um, exactly. You got it? Yeah. Perfect. Well, I guess it, you want it to be super rapid. Got it. Yeah. Well, it was only flash then. Did it not? Okay. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Cool. Okay, class, I think time is almost running out. Awesome. So, have an awesome Thanksgiving. If you're going to... Uh, where's everyone going? Well, that's nice. Cool. Ah, oh, nice, wonderful. So yes, have take plenty of time to relax and play with your animals and enjoy them and get to know them. Um, hunt a squirrel for your grandma, Larry. You can have a Thanksgiving feast. Um, <laughs> or birds. You guys are doing. You can find out. You can do birds versus squirrels ranking and just not only eating but you know which one of them is more delicious. Uh -huh. <laughs> I 